In 1994, millions of Americans from across the country were glued to their television screen to witness a low-speed pursuit involving former football player O.J. Simpson. The chase, which lasted for several hours, ended right here at O.J.'s Brentwood home. From archive footage to interviews with those that witnessed the event firsthand, our Live Now and Then special goes into the event that captivated Americans from coast to coast. We'll start with our WTTG Fox 5 DC broadcast from June 17, 1994. From Fox Television in Washington, D.C., this is the 10 o'clock news. I can't go on. No matter what the outcome, people will look and point. I can't take that. I can't subject my children to that. A friend reads an apparent suicide note from O.J. Simpson, who disappears after being charged with two counts of murder. Good evening, I'm David Burnett. And I'm Morris Jones. Where is O.J. Simpson? A former football star gave Los Angeles police the slip, a fugitive from justice facing charges of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole, and a restaurant waiter. This evening, an apparent suicide letter attributed to Simpson was read by a friend. Simpson's attorney says he's keeping his fingers crossed and praying that O.J. will turn up alive. Fox reporter Rod Bernson is standing by live in Los Angeles with the latest. Rod? The dramatic announcement at Los Angeles Police Headquarters stunned everyone. O.J. Simpson's a fugitive. He's wanted in connection with the double murder. The man who eluded so many on the football field is now on the run from the police. The LAPD launched their manhunt this afternoon after Simpson failed to surrender as promised. The Los Angeles Police Department right now is actively searching for Mr. Simpson. The Los Angeles Police Department is also very unhappy with the activities surrounding his failure to surrender. And we will be looking further into those activities. Los Angeles District Attorney Gil Garcetti appeared on television warning the public not to help Simpson if they see him. Mr. Simpson is a fugitive of justice right now. And if you assist him in any way, you are committing a felony. Think about it. Garcetti, who filed the murder charges earlier today, said he would consider seeking the death penalty for Simpson. Late this afternoon, Simpson's attorney, Robert Shapiro, appeared with one of O.J.'s closest friends. The men read a letter written by Simpson shortly before he disappeared, which friends and doctors say sounds like a suicide note. I think of my life and feel I've done most of the right things. So why do I end up like this? I can't go on, no matter what the outcome people will look and point. I can't take that. I can't subject my children to that. This way they can move on and go on with their lives. Please, if I've done anything worthwhile in my life, let my kids live in peace from you, the press. Within an hour of failure to surrender himself, Los Angeles police issued an all-points bulletin alerting law enforcement authorities in California and the rest of the country that O.J. Simpson's on the run. Los Angeles police called him a murderer. They said he's out there somewhere, and they vowed to find him. In Los Angeles, Rod Bernson, Fox News. Now, while that was airing in Washington, the chase was getting underway 3,000 miles away. Now, Americans from all over were watching that now infamous white Bronco make its way across Los Angeles. Our Fox 11 Los Angeles team were spectators just like the rest of us. Here's a look at their live coverage. Let's listen to this officer. Assistance capacity at this time. What about the report that officers, whether they be Orange County Sheriff's deputies involved or your officers from the CHP, have seen O.J. Simpson with a gun to his head in that vehicle? Yes, I don't have any specific reports on that, uh, on the information that I have. So okay. I can't comment on that. But if there is perhaps a weapon or fear that there might be a weapon inside, safety has to come into uh, play here when you're considering trying to stop a vehicle, correct? Uh, yes, we have, uh, uh, the CHP has policies for high risk and or felony stops, and the officers, if they are involved in that, uh, 
will uh, uh, act according to policy, and they're well trained, and we go over these scenarios all the time in training. So the officers are well aware of the procedure to use in felony stops or high risk situations. At what speed are they going now, Officer Ferrier? Any idea? Uh, I don't have that information right now. Uh, I mean, it's not, certainly it's not, not a high, high speed pursuit. Uh, the location is, uh, it looks like it's westbound SR 91 at perhaps uh, uh, Atlantic, I believe. Okay, we're just told now, uh, Officer, that it's west of the 605, westbound on the, on the 91 freeway. I see. This is really a case, as it has been in so many of these pursuits on Southern California freeways, uh, perhaps waiting for the driver to run out of gas or for, in this case, if, if what we've heard about O.J. Simpson with the gun, uh, perhaps to just change his mind and pull over and end it all. I don't mean end it all in terms of O.J. Simpson. I mean end this, this pursuit. You're just going to wait them out, in other words. Yes, like I say, uh, our policy is uh, generally to follow the... Uh, uh, pursuit and hope, hoping that in this case that the suspect vehicle will run out of gas and stop. Fortunately, uh, the it's not a high-speed pursuit. Uh, they're going at a relatively uh, moderate speed, which uh, is better than a high-speed pursuit, obviously. And uh, if it, if it were a high turn into a high-speed pursuit, uh, CHP officers at the time uh, would uh, choose to either abandon the pursuit or remain in the pursuit depending on factors that would involve safety or potential hazardous situations. Christine, I've just noticed an extraordinary thing, and that is that there are cars. Look at those people right there waving mm -hmm. as this Bronco goes by. They're waving at O.J. Simpson. Everybody in Southern California who has a radio or a television is certainly aware of what's going on right now. And this is a Bronco. We believe O.J. Simpson is in it along with his longtime friend Al Cowlings, a former teammate at SC. They are westbound on the 91, and people who, of course, have been pulled over by the CHP to uh, give this vehicle clear passage on the freeway. Our if you have just joined us now, just to recap very briefly, as we watch this Ford Bronco continue westbound on the 91 freeway, west of the 605, to give you some idea of where it is in Orange County now, there's another overpass with the people crowded. Now they're coming up to the 110 freeway, the Harbor Freeway, on the westbound 91. O.J. Simpson at about 10.30 this morning was formally charged with first-degree murder with special circumstances in the murders late Sunday night or early Monday morning of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and a friend of hers, Ronald Lyle Goldman. They were, of course, both buried yesterday. The evidence, circumstantial albeit, had been mounting against O.J. Simpson all week since the murders uh, were discovered. And the district attorney's office got what they needed from the Los Angeles Police Department in terms of scientific information last night, made the decision to arrest O.J. Simpson this morning, arranged with his attorney for him to turn himself in at Parker Center at 11 o'clock this morning. 11 o'clock came and went. He didn't do it. 11.45 was the next time he was supposed to do it. He didn't do it. And then the all points bulletin went out. O.J. Simpson has been missing now for about seven and a half hours as this relatively low speed pursuit goes on. You heard the CHP officer a moment ago tell us that basically this is a waiting game, hoping that there's that the crowd again, there. out on the freeway. Just an extraordinary sight. And certainly an indication of the respect and admiration that people generally have for O.J. Simpson, even in circumstances like this where he has been formally charged with two counts of first-degree murder and is conceivably looking at the death penalty if he is convicted. So many people saying as uh, the week went on, I hope it isn't so, I hope O.J. is not connected. Uh, even people who were out at the home today uh, where his ex-wife used to live saying we're praying for O.J., we hope he is doing okay. They knew that he was a fugitive at the time. Still, O.J. was loved by so many people. He was truly an American hero, a football legend who went on to movies and to television broadcasting. Uh, it's hard to believe that something like this could happen where he is now running for his life here. He is um, a fugitive on the run. Authorities following him, believed, they believe he is in this vehicle right now on the West 91 near the 110 freeway. And it's interesting to note the time. This started apparently around 645, a little bit after the main part of rush hour. Uh, authorities, though, are attempting to clear the freeway, although you can see a car right there going up right next to the Bronco. Uh, not an easy job clearing the freeway.
From OJ's celebrity status to the public's disbelief, it's just some of the things that media helicopter pilot Hannah Zoe Tour remembers about that day. She was in the air witnessing OJ making his way toward Brentwood, where he was later put in handcuffs. I am joined by Hannah Zoe Tour. She was a helicopter pilot at that time and saw the entire experience unfold. Hannah, thank you so much for talking with me this morning. Thank you. Before we get into the chase itself, tell me what do you remember about that day and getting this assignment? Well, um, it was quite a day for sure. We, um, you know, we we wound up starting the day like any other day. Uh, we heard OJ though was. Um, you know, the, the news started breaking that OJ was going to turn himself in down at Parker Center at the LAPD headquarters. So I flew the helicopter to downtown L.A., just about a block from LAPD headquarters and landed at, at a heliport. I wanted to be there and, and see history. We had broken the story days earlier that there was a, a double homicide on um, South Bundy Drive. So... You know, I wanted to, I just wanted to see it. I wanted to see OJ turning himself in. And we had our camera crew there. And then when they announced OJ Simpson was in the wind, he failed to show up. He was a fugitive. I turned to my crew and I said, let's get in the helicopter. Let's find him. And, you know, which is kind of crazy given how big LA is. And you know, there's millions and millions of people and places to be. Uh, but we we went airborne, flew to Orange County. I thought he might be at the gravesite of Nicole Simpson Brown. And if he was, you know, suicidal, like people were saying, I thought perhaps he would go go down there. Um, but he wasn't at the gravesite. Um, we saw an undercover police unit outside. So they were ob obviously staking out the area, but no OJ. So. I started moving away from the cemetery when I heard uh, through our scanners that O.J. Simpson's location had been triangulated by the cell phone radio traffic, had been triangulated by the FBI to be in the area of the El Toro Y. And that's exactly where the cemetery is. And I looked down below us and there on the freeway, there was a white Bronco and within a matter of seconds, there was a police unit, a sheriff's unit, another sheriff's unit, highway patrol, and the, the white Bronco wasn't stopping. So we knew we had the Bronco with the flip of, of the switch. We were on the air live ahead of anyone else for about 22 minutes. Wow. What was your reaction to actually seeing this unfold in front of your very eyes? You know, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because O.G. Simpson was kind of a larger than life character. Uh, I lived in Brentwood. I lived about a ridge over from where O.J. Simpson lived on Rockingham. So I saw O.J. from time to time and he was very friendly, um, would sign autographs. He was, you know, a beloved member of, you know, Los Angeles. He was a Heisman Trophy. He was a sports legend. He was a movie star. You know, he golfed with presidents and now like another, you know, just another criminal running from the law. There was O.J. Simpson. It was it was surreal, to say the least. Um, <laughs> it was just surreal. So seeing this unfold, now you're watching this car chase. What are you seeing and what was that experience like? Well, watching down below. You know, seeing Al Callings driving the white Bronco, O.J. Simpson in the back armed with a revolver was very surreal. It's just, you know, these people were, you know, legends. And uh, to see this, to see this playing out on a on a Southern California freeway was strange. And what made matters even stranger was the fact that with the live reporting, people started going out to the freeways and they started lining the freeways like it was some sort of like entertainment. Almost like a funeral. Yeah, like entertainment. It was um it was really strange. And you and you had to remember 
This was a man accused of a double homicide. This was very, very serious. And, you know, how would it end? Would O.J. Simpson be taken into custody? Would he give up? Or would police, you know, engage him in a shootout? So we just didn't know. Uh, after a little bit, it became apparent that he was heading back to the area of Brentwood. People in pursuits tend to go back to areas where they're comfortable. I've covered hundreds of police pursuits. So that seems to be a constant. So I, you know, patiently followed behind. O.J. Simpson went from, you know, one freeway to another, wound up on the 405 freeway, went past LAX, got to Sunset Boulevard, the white Bronco, left the freeway, went up to Sunset, made a left-hand turn, and headed to Brentwood. And behind O.J. Simpson's you know, white Bronco driven by Al Callings were dozens of police and highway patrolmen and sheriff's deputies following behind. And and alongside, along those roads were, were thousands of people almost cheering him on. And finally, they got to the Rockingham estate. Uh, Callings pulled in. Uh, and at that point, the SWAT team had already set up outside there. Uh, and I remember seeing OJ's son come from inside the home. He came from, um, from inside the home and approached the white Bronco. And then he was pulled back by officers and detectives. There were some sort of um, conversations going on, uh, you know, for a little bit of time. And finally, OJ Simpson came out with two picture frames of his kids and, her, you know, and, and it was taken into custody. And uh, that was what I saw that day. It was uh, one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and everybody knows that iconic white Bronco. Everyone has that ingrained in their mind. Did you realize while you were in the air, in that moment, how much of an effect this would have? Not only you know, in pop culture, but also for car chases going forward? No, not at the time. Uh, I, I knew it was a big story. Um, you know, I, I, you know, everybody in the world wanted to find OJ. Joe, uh, excuse me. Uh, everybody in the world wanted to find OJ Simpson. Every law enforcement officer wanted to get this guy. Uh, wanted to locate him. Every journalist wanted to find him. And then there was the public. And so, to to get there and and, and to be part of this and, and see this was very unique, you know, even for somebody experienced in covering breaking news. And, and there were, you know, by the end of this uh, pursuit, there were 22 helicopters flying in the air. It was like an aerial dogfight. So it brought with it some of the more crazy sights. It looked like something from Apocalypse Now as, as these this armada of helicopters following OJ wound up going through Brentwood. So it was quite a uh, quite an event for people both in the air and on the ground. Well, and that's a good segue. So you're in the air. How long were you in the air for? And did you ever have to refuel? Yeah, which is another crazy story. Um, my team consisted of Marika Gerard, the camera operator, uh, and co-pilot of the aircraft was Larry Welk III, the band leader's grandson. And so we had to, we were first down to Orange County and first to pick up the pursuit. And as it made its way back to Los Angeles, I started getting lower on, on fuel. I, I could fly with about three hours, 20 minutes of fuel. So we were getting close to losing fuel. So when O.J. Simpson went through, uh, drove through the airspace, the arrival end of LAX, we ran, flew over to an airport, got fuel very, very quickly. And then they went on to the credit card because the uh, company wanted to know what Lawrence Welk wanted with jet fuel. <laughs> and we had to explain it's the grandson. We're covering the pursuit. And I remember the the agent for the credit card company going, I'm watching that. Get back. We approve it. We approve it. You know, and so we we were able to pay for our fuel got back in the air and uh, had plenty of fuel to finish out this, this not only pursuit, but the standoff 
And then we followed O.J. Simpson. The, um, the There was a, a few cars, a detective vehicle and a SWAT team vehicle that followed O.J. Simpson uh, from the Rockingham estate to Parker Center, where he was uh, booked into the men's uh, jail at LAPD. So we were able to witness all of that. So again, it was kind of like... Uh, to answer your question, we must have been in the air that day, about five and a half hours. Before I let you go, yeah. when you think about those five hours that you were up in the air, what poignant moment sticks out to you as, wow, I can't believe I just saw that? Um, I think really um, once I saw... Well, what really stood out, you know, throughout that was I was allowed, I was given permission by the sheriff's department to drop way down and take a closer look. Because I think they were curious, too, with our cameras, we can zoom in. I think they were curious, um, like I was, to see what was happening inside that white Bronco. And what I saw was O.J. Simpson in the back. I can clearly see the guy. And I saw that I couldn't see if he was holding a revolver, but I saw the picture frames and that stood out to me because it was like almost like a, a punch in the chest because I realized that, you know, regardless of what this man has been accused of, he too has a family. And, um, you know, this is very real. You know, I'm not going to get caught up like, you know, oh, OJ's going for his last touchdown his last run i mean even the lapd swat team members that we were listening to um, during the end phase of the pursuit you know that standoff at rockingham they were making remarks like that they were joking on the two-way radio going in for the touchdown and you know gallows humor because they have that very serious job of shooting or not shooting you know uh, making sure that the suspect is not a danger to officers or to others so that's all playing out but just seeing those pictures and and realizing that this is going on really really hit me oj simpson was famously acquitted for the murders but was later embroiled in a civil lawsuit and also put in jail for burglary charges but chances are when you hear his name it's the low speed chase you think of. From Live Now and Then, I'm Stephanie Weaver. It's absolutely bizarre. Well, I think that uh, certainly is a word that applies to this entire case from its beginning, Jane, and, and uh, perhaps it, it, it should not have any other tag put on it than bizarre. Certainly a bizarre thing that has happened since this morning when O.J. Simpson and Al Cowlings disappeared. That was roughly an hour after O.J. Simpson was formally charged with two counts of first-degree murder. All right, we thank Stephanie Weaver there. Back out live here to the Live Now newsroom. You just saw that segment live now and then. 29 years tomorrow since O.J. Simpson took the world uh, on that police chase there in that white Bronco. And you saw Stephanie there in that report outside uh, the Brentwood, California estate where uh, those... Murders happened of Nicole Brown Simpson and Rodden Goldman so many years ago.